In Australia, Qantas says it's standing down 2,500 workers because of COVID travel restrictions inside the country. The airline says the two-month stand down will affect domestic pilots, cabin crew and airport workers, and that's mostly in New South Wales, which is Sydney. The airline reduced its domestic operations to less than 40% in July. Qantas is a stark example of the multi-speed recovery in the global travel industry. In Europe, most airlines are operating well below their pre-pandemic levels. This tweet from the air traffic control company Eurocontrol shows the decline from two summers ago. Some startling numbers uh, that you see, except perhaps for Wizz Air, which is only down 7%. The U.S. airport screenings, meanwhile, show that while air travel there is making huge gains, it has yet to fully recover. In Latin America, Panama's Copa Airlines is flying to around three quarters of its usual destinations. The CEO of Copa Airlines told me demand is up, especially for U.S. routes, and it is important to stay flexible in the face of Delta variant. We still have a lot of uncertainty, so it's hard, it's hard to plan uh, for anything, we have demand today. The U.S., as you both said, is probably the stronger market from, from South America and from Latin America. Uh, but given the Delta variant and everything that is happening, it's hard to know what's going to happen in three months. So we've been reactivating planes, calling back crews, and just staying flexible in case anything changes. When you look at the, the, the environment, the airlines that went into the, well, actually went into U.S. Chapter 11 or restructured in their own countries. Do you see a, le a level playing field for you in Central and Latin and Southern America? Well, it, it's not right now. Well, I'll start with the, US, the airlines from the U.S. The U.S. carriers have more capacity into Latin America than what they had pre-pandemic. And again, they've had very large subsidies. Uh, then our, our competitors are in Chapter 11 still, Mexico, Avianca, eh, Latam, and they'll come out of Chapter 11 with uh, better leverage, probably lower costs. So, but we're ready for that. We've always been very lean, very competitive, and, you know, we'll, we'll be ready, but, and we'll make the, we'll make the, the field level, uh, but it's a bigger challenge for everything you've said. I always think of your airline, of Copa, as the little airline that could. That while everybody else is going around the world making a lot of noise about everything, there you are in Panama City, you're just getting on with it, building out the hub. But a lot of damage was done during the pandemic. So how, how are you going to rebuild the significance of the Panama hub? Yeah, so we're, we're doing that. We're in the middle of that. And uh, at the beginning of the year, we were at below below 40% of 2019 capacity. And right now, we are somewhere, if you go into the OAG and you look at our schedules, it's somewhere between 60 and 70% of before 2019. So we're, we are, uh, I would say, a long way into rebuilding our hub. And we'll do that, you know, maintaining our world-leading on-time performance, but also being very cost conscious because the future is going to be more competitive and passengers are going to be more leisure and less corporate. Finally, American Jet Smart, uh, Delta is in your area. Of course, United has been for many years. Um, are you worried and do you need, do you, are you looking, do you think, to do a deal with somebody somewhere? Well, we're in, in, in uh, Star Alliance. We have a long-standing partnership with United. And our hub in Panama has a unique geographic position, and we think our hub is going to be even more valuable in the future as some markets, some point-to-point -point markets shrink. So we think we're okay as we are. We're always open to talk to anyone, but we think we're in a very good position where we are today, and we hope to come out of the pandemic stronger than our competitors.